You're listening to Slightly Warped, the podcast that tackles topics from every angle. Here's Richard Kearney and Ryan Foley. Every drug addict started at one time. <laughs> <laughs> and we are live. It is the Touché. Slightly Warped Podcast. Now, many of you might be wondering what the hell we were just referencing. <laughs> we're going to keep that in-house. <laughs> Big Show, how you doing, man? I'm good, brother. A little tired today, a little cold. You know, the weather's in the R. Kelly degrees right now. So, Yeah, yeah. Um, damn, you went the R. Kelly route. <laughs> you know, in the teens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See, we're already. Whoosh. Yeah. Um, they don't call the show slightly warped for nothing. They sure don't. Hey, um, I know we're gonna get to sports last, but I want to start off by saying congrats to the seven time in a row AFC West champion. The Kansas City Chiefs. Congratulations. Enjoy it. Yes, congratulations to them. <laughs> okay. I was hoping that would just slide by. <laughs> really? Ever? Well, I'm about to put the magic touch on my Raiders for next year. Uh, in April, I will be going to Vegas for the Allegiant Stadium Tour. And then a couple of days later, the uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers, who's been on my bucket list, I will see them there in Allegiant. Sweet. So, yeah. Well, you know, since the Chiefs guy buried the Chiefs flag under that stadium when they were building it, y'all been cursed since then. So I'm going to dig that son bitch up. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Jimmy Hoffa. You'll never find it. That is true. Yeah, they can't can't use anything to look for. There's no body heat. There's no. It's just, <laughs> hey, then I'll just have to uh, bury the Raider flag somewhere in Arrowhead. Well, I mean that's where they normally get buried at. So yeah, why not? Why not their flag? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> you started it, brother. I did. I did. <laughs> but I'm going to keep it festive because we are finally in the holiday mood. And if we you are. watched the show from a couple weeks ago, we were like, bah, humbug, I'm not ready for the holidays. Well, it's only a handful of days before Christmas, so I figured we might as well be in the holiday mood because, you know. Gotcha. So, the question of the day is, our favorite three holiday movies slash TV shows? Mm. And uh, I'm going to let you start off, show. You don't have to give me all three if you don't want to yet. You can just do one at a time. We can alternate. It's up to you. All right, at number three, Polar Express. Interesting. I haven't seen one of my. You have not seen Polar Express, a cartoon or animated version. Yeah, I mean, I'll have to ask Darian about that. You know, he could probably tell me. Check it out. It's definitely worth watching. Tom Hanks plays the voice of the main character, little boy. Plays the character of the train engineer. Plays the character of Santa Claus. So it's it's actually really good. Oh, okay. My number three would be uh, the original Christmas Carol movie, just because nostalgia. Black and white? Yeah. A little nostalgia. I'm going I'm to be honest, I don't like any of the Christmas Carol movies. It, I, I like it, the idea. It, it doesn't I like the hold idea. up. It doesn't hold up today, but, you know, like I said, nostalgia. I mean, the idea of the story itself mm -hmm. is good. I just, any any movie version that it comes out in, I just like, eh. Maybe it's just because everybody's done it. That is true. So. An interesting one would be Patrick Stewart's One Man Christmas Carol. Never seen it. It, it is interesting, but, you know. No, probably not going to see it. It wouldn't make my <laughs> list, no. It, it's just <laughs> interesting in the fact that there's one man talking for a couple hours and and he put he fills your head with you know everything that's going on, but 
Gotcha. Partially because you know what's coming. <laughs> Number two on my list is A Christmas Story. Bravo. That is a good one. What the was that? Original. The Red the Red Rider? Gonna shoot your eye out. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think. And they're toying around with the idea of a sequel? Now that it's he's out. older? Oh. It, it's out. It's on one of the streaming networks. I I'm think Hulu. Look that up. Think Hulu or Peacock or something like that, but yeah, it's it's out. We okay. haven't watched it yet. My number two would be Elf. Will Ferrell. Elf pretty is funny a good one. It. Elf is a good one. Yeah, Elf is a good one. Yeah. Uh, my number one. I'm probably gonna steal yours. Die Hard. You you did because that was my number <laughs> one. <laughs> so we are in agreement. Die Hard is a freaking Christmas movie. So if oh, anybody yeah. disagrees with us, now's your chance to leave a comment. We're still going to tell you that you're wrong because Die yeah. Hard is a Christmas movie. And it's and the if, best Christmas movie. Yes, and if you believe that it is not a Christmas movie, I want to know. I need I need facts why it's not. Exactly. I mean, the I movie mean, takes place during a Christmas party. Hello. Christmas music in the, in the background. Movie. Yeah. Yes. Ho, 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 I have a machine gun. If that's not Christmas, I don't know what is. Exactly. yippee ki my folks. All right. <laughs> <laughs> On to the next topic. I thought you, I thought you were going to drop the full line. I could have, you know, we're uncensored. Do you have show. any honorable mentions for Christmas movies? <sighs> Maybe It's a Wonderful Life, but it's been forever since I've seen it. That's That's a pretty good one. Yeah. You have I, I can go with that one. Uh, I would go with that one. I mean, I just was curious because I know it's kind of hard just to leave them to three, but yeah, I just picked my 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 three favorite. I don't mean I like all the Santa Claus movies with Tim Allen. Well, I understand he's on Disney Plus with a series. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 a, it's the Santa Clauses, I think, or something. The whole like family. That, but, yeah, yeah. I mean, I haven't watched any of that either, but. Like the movies were pre like the original movie was very good. I think um, I only watched the original movie. I don't think I watched any of the sequels. The second one, the second one was kind of kooky. But then the third one, uh, I can't think of that that comedian's name, but he was on Saturday Night Live, and he wasn't Pee Wee Herman, but he always had the. the I know who you're talking about. You know what yeah. I'm talking about. With he plays like hair. Yeah, he plays uh Mr. Freeze or or you know that type of character in Christmas, you know, the father father cold or whatever it is, but and they're and him and Santa Claus are battling out because Tim Allen doesn't want to be Santa Claus anymore. So mm. but it's it's that one's pretty good. Two, yeah, one really good, three's better, two's all right. So those were that was my honorable mention. All right. So, gang, here's one I'm going to present to you. Um, I read this in an article, and I can't find the article. Shame on me. L.A. County Sheriff's Deputy under investigation after sex act is caught on hot mic. Now, I'm assuming that he had someone either in the car with him and he was getting busy or he went into some place and was getting busy because I believe it was the shoulder mic that they have on them must have gotten pressed <laughs> and from what the article wow. said uh, the dispatcher was on there saying Mike is hot Mike is hot obviously anybody who knows anything about microphones you're not going to hear the dispatcher if your button is pressed so she was forced to listen to him finish <laughs> before <laughs> I want to know have police officers progressed beyond donuts on their breaks so was he with someone else or by himself he was with someone else okay that's part of the investigation um so did he pick somebody up <laughs> and you know the article didn't say it doesn't say whether it's his partner it doesn't say whether he picked someone up, and it doesn't say whether or not he was on break. 
which, you know, just because you're on break. I don't think I, you really I, get a break when you're in a police uniform, but. Uh, yeah, that may be true. So that, that, I, I, I'm I'm going to find that article this weekend and I'm, I'm going to try to <clears throat> get some more details so that we can go into the next show and figure out just what the hell happened. But I'm thinking to serve and protect just became to get served and not protect <laughs> or get serviced. Yeah, there you uh, go. <laughs> yeah, see, but that's a slippery slope because I know it might have been a decade ago. Mm -hmm. There was a police officer in Oklahoma that um, was sexually assaulting females that he pulled over, mm. and you know, and like it was a multitude of them, and he uh, he got sentenced to he was a, what you know a serial rapist. But as a as a I think a Oklahoma City Sheriff Department. Wow. So that's a pretty pretty touchy subject, and it's definitely a display of what's the word I'm looking for over misuse your of power, power. Yeah, misuse of your authority or whatever. Yeah. So hopefully, in this particular guy's situation, not that it's ever okay. Um, you know that it, it was a consensual. <laughs> deal for both parties yeah i mean that that's the least of his worries uh he he well, has been suspended pending the investigation but oh i bet I, i'm i'm pretty sure he's got more at least one on the dash time. cam <laughs> or the body cam oh some things you just can't unsee so i'm glad that there was no <laughs> body cam footage <laughs> Okay, so here's a question. Let me LA pose this County story Sheriff to you. Too. Let me pose this story to you. All right. This article here says that a man finds $500 in a book. And I'm posing the question, what should he do? This article, in if you go in depth, he bought some books at the Goodwill store. And inside one of the books was $500. I don't know if it was five $100 bills or, you know, if there's such thing as a $500 bill, because I'll never see it. Um, <clears throat> I'm assuming it's five $100 bills. But anyway, he found it in a book. It doesn't say what he did at the time, but I'm going to ask you, what would you do with it? <laughs> And by the way, I'm pretty sure we're not going to go back to the Goodwill and say, hey, this was in the book. Uh, who was the guy that uh, sold these books to you? Because uh, that, that's not going to happen. I'd pocket it, of course. I know. This is a foregone conclusion. But what would you do with it? What I'd do with it? Yeah. What book did it come out of? Is there a sequel? Do I need to go buy the next book? I mean, am I actually reading the book? And then I found the five hundred dollars. I mean, I don't know. It depends on the book, I guess. Yeah, I, I would. I mean, what do you spend five hundred? Probably pay some bills, get some food for the family. You know, whatever. You know, essentials. I wouldn't like go. Wouldn't go put down payment on whatever or something. You know, no, nah, I wouldn't no, do no. that. But I mean, five hundred dollars in the grand scheme of things really isn't that much. But no, it not is, these days. But, but, you know, I'd probably pay some bills. I can see that. Um, and I'm sure whoever did that was an older person and kept their money in the book in case they ever got robbed. Because most thieves don't look through books. And, and, and we can't assume that that person is even around anymore. If they passed right. away and a loved one wanted to sell their books, yeah, they wouldn't go through them. Mm -hmm. But now everybody that's watching this and learning that if you ever go into some old books, just go ahead and flip through the pages just in case. You might flip cash out. Yeah. Ooh, I like this book all of a sudden. I think I'll <laughs> buy it. That's a hell of a bookmark. Green eggs and ham. <laughs> I seriously doubt any senior citizens would be reading that book, but... Hey, if they got grandchildren, know. you never know. That is maybe, true. Maybe it's what they're cooking for dinner. You ever had green eggs? Yes, actually, I have. It's just grape jelly. 
It was well, no, it was color dyed for St. Oh, Patrick's you, Day. You you can use grape jelly too, and you get yeah. the same result. I'm not really a jelly person. I don't like grape jelly. <gasps> okay, let me I'm stop more of a right jam. there. I'm more of a jam guy versus jelly. Everybody watching, this is my question to the fans out there. Leave a comment. You jelly or you jam? Which one are you? I'm jelly. Big Show is jam. Which one of us is right? Me? Okay. No. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> Le leave your comment. I, I respect the opinions of my elders. You can be right. I knew I should have cut the whole thing off. <laughs> oh, all right. What, what what do we got here? Um, I know it's time to do our AFC West review, but we got a um, question from one of the fans out there, and they wanted us to talk about Tom Brady and the Patriots, and uh, are they worse now that they are apart? Um, what is the status of both of them in our eyes? I'm going to let you go first. It's a complicated question, but right now i would say you know eh. i mean yeah that magical season that tom brady had his first year with tampa bay that's not going to be duplicated i think the rest of the nfl is caught up in the grand scheme of things they are where they would be even with each other now because tom's getting on up there and the patriots uh they have to reload now so who's to say that they'd be that much better with each other right now. Granted, there's argument for and against it, but I'm thinking that they are where they would be with each other, even though they're not together anymore. It The ride has to end sometime. That's a, that's a good point. Define um, that magic's not going to happen again. What do you mean by that? You said his magical season in Tampa Bay. Well, dude just went to another team and automatically made the playoffs. That defense. He did not automatically win the play make playoffs. He automatically won the Super Bowl. Well, yeah, I, I'm saying you got to get in the playoffs before you get to the Super Bowl. But it happened the very next year with Matt Stafford. No, I'm talking about with Tom Brady. It's not going to happen. again. I know. Oh, well, I thought you meant when you said he was like, it won't ever happen again. Oh, no. Many, like, well, no, many well, a quarterback have gone to another year. team and went to the Super Bowl. So, you know, I get that. I really do. But as far as Tom Brady, and I'm not saying that he'll never get to a Super Bowl again. He might play three more years and actually get to another one because it's Tom Brady. I mean, you know, cheaters prosper. I mean, uh, I'm sorry. I was spacing off there. I've learned not to count him out, though, because, you know, I just go back to that fateful night where I was watching the Atlanta Falcons just beat the hell out of the Patriots. And for whatever reason, I don't remember if we had bad weather or what, the TV went out for a few minutes. I was pissed. By the time it came back on, they freaking tied the game to send it to overtime. And the Super Bowl? Yeah. I don't know if it was overtime or still a few minutes left in regulation, but the Patriots had uh, tied it up. And I'm like, this could not happen. This could not happen. And, oh, by the way, Matt Ryan, we are not forgetting you. Two of the biggest. We'll get, we'll get to him yeah. when we get to the other football. Let's, let's stay on track. But, okay, so the question is, If Brady and Belichick were together today, would they be on the same path that they're at right now? And I'm going to say no. They would be different versions. They might be not as great as they were, but they definitely wouldn't be as bad as they are now. For instance, let's just, I mean, because this can kind of bleed into your guys' game this past weekend without us actually attacking it. I'm almost positive if the score was, wasn't it 24-24 or 28-28 before 24, that stupid play happened? Yeah. 24-24, Brady would have just took a knee. Exactly. He I wouldn't agree. have handed he wouldn't have handed the ball off for him to chuck the ball over to whatever and 
So those stupid plays aren't happening if he's still the quarterback. And the tenure that he had with the Patriots, that coaching staff and him, they it, it's kind of like when you watch Kelsey and Mahomes play, they just kind of know what the other person is thinking. Yeah. I think that's where Brady and Belichick were. They just had a difference of opinion. And I really think that this time, the reason why Tom left was due to money. He knew that, okay, this is my last probably contract year. I'm probably not going to be a free agent. I have given you guys these team-friendly deals my whole career. I want to get paid. Belichick, who's always been the coach, to cut a player earlier versus later so he doesn't have to deal with the crappy years with that player and, you know, decided no. And that's what it boiled down to. I think they would still be a pretty formidable force formidable force in the AFC if they were still together. Would they be top five? Maybe not. They'd be top seven. Maybe top ten. Yeah. They would definitely be vying for a lower seed because I don't think they compete with the Bengals or the Bills or the Chiefs. Well, prior to the, the game Sunday, they were the number seven seed. So who? The Patriots. Yeah. I mean, but there's a lot of that's just because everybody else sucks. You have cream at the top. And then, I mean, really, after you got the first four or five teams in the AFC, well, hell, we'll just do this. The first four division winners of the AFC, everybody else pretty much the same. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, how that's many... why we still have a shot at the playoffs. That's exactly. how bad it is. Exactly. And, and there's we're only eight four... lost team. And it's across the NFL. I believe there's only four teams that have been eliminated. Maybe five out of 32. He's talking to you, Bronco fan. And Ram fan, you know. Yeah. You know. But, um, you know, it doesn't really sting as bad if you're a Ram fan. Because you're not even 365 days removed from winning it all. So, you know. True. True. I mean, it doesn't sting as bad. I mean, they does. really fell from grace, but at least they were in grace. The only other team to fall like that is the Denver Broncos after the 99 Super Bowl or after That's they won true. in 98, their 99 year. However, you know, they didn't have Elway no more. So, um, you know, that's part of the reason why they they tanked. But I think I, I, I think the fact that Tom Brady won his Super Bowl in Tampa Bay went to his head with that particular team. Because I believe we talked about this last week, week before last, how Tom is going in and changing up stuff from whatever the coaches are putting down. And, you know, is that right? Is it wrong? You know, it's each his own, you know, on that. You know, it's it's not for me to decide as a simple old little podcaster here that likes to voice my opinion for about an hour every week. But I, I, I think that – and the Patriots side – that was just something he did. You know what I mean? Like, it's not something he just started with Tampa Bay. Yeah. I mean, he. I'm assuming he did it all the way through New England. And, and, I think, and also, like we said last week, let's not get it twisted. From a certain degree, certain standpoint, almost every starting quarterback in the NFL changes up a little something according to the players he has every now and then. Yeah, I think so, but I don't know necessarily – agree with the way that I've read that he did it in Tampa Bay. Like I don't see Mahomes doing a closed door meeting without the coaches and changing the plays. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, to me that's a little disrespectful. Because that's kind of how I read it with the Tampa Bay thing. But again, consider the source. We don't hear any coaches bitching and complaining about it. So, you know, why is it a big deal? Um I you know Father Time catches up with everybody. He's Father Time's undefeated. I think the best part of Tom Brady has came and went. I really believe that the longer Tom Brady plays, the more he's going to tarnish his career. He should have stayed retired. Yeah. But I will go out on this day, December 20th, 2022, 
we are only a few short months from free agency period in the NFL. So what that's what April, May, March, April, May next year, free agency period. Yeah. Tom Brady will play for the Miami Dolphins next year. Whoa. Wow. That is a bold prediction. I'm gonna need to uh index this uh so that I can look this up uh in about four months and see how close to true we were. And that'll be his eighth Super Bowl. He'll win a Super Bowl with the Dolphins. All I can tell you is he won't be a Buccaneer, but uh, that, that's pretty bold right there. I find it hard to believe that he'll be a Buccaneer. Not saying that he won't, but if he's at the point now where he already tried to go to Miami, and Miami is loaded receiver-wise, I to me, that's a, per, that's a match made in football heaven. And As a written. Chiefs fan, do I want to see that? Of course not. No. As a football fan, I would flip it and love it. And I know as, a, and I know a certain someone in Jersey would love it too. She would. She really would. We're talking about you, Debbie. Um I wouldn't like it. Why because that's who, another year your Raiders ain't gonna make the playoffs? Yeah. Uh but <laughs> I would also what does that say about Tua then? Nothing. You just Doesn't keep him. Thing about- you keep him, or do you, you know, as part of trade the package him. deal, let I'd him probably go. trade him. You're not going to win a Super Bowl with Tua. Well, so if you could trade Tua with Carr right now, would you? You mean get rid of Carr and take Tua? Yeah. Hell no. Okay. So, I mean, that's my point. So you're not going to win a Super Bowl with Tua. You're right. It's kind of like what the Packers have with Aaron Rodgers and Jordan Love. Yeah. And by the way, I think Jordan Love is about to be on the trading block. Yeah, one of them is. Either Aaron Rodgers or Love's going to be on the trading block. One of them is. Well, they put a lot of money into Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, they put, his, they his... put Jordan Love out there for a game uh, a couple weeks ago. and That's because right, really Aaron joint. was hurt. That's because yeah. Aaron was injured, but still... I, I don't feel that they're going to trade Love if they don't give him no playing time. Because who's going to trade him? They're not going to know. I mean, he's on his fourth year in the league as a basically a red shirt behind Aaron Rodgers. I believe that if the Packers are out of it, they will start Love in one of the last two games. Oh, yeah, I think if they're eliminated, he'll definitely start. I mean, Aaron Rodgers already said, yeah, that's that's what they should do. But as long as they're not eliminated, he wants to play. I get that. Yeah. But I, it'd be hard-pressed for me as a GM to put so much draft capital in that one player and then not ever play him and then trade him away for a fourth or fifth or sixth round pick. Because ain't nobody going to get you a high pick for somebody that ain't played the game. No. I mean, what did Deshaun Watson, did they, did, did Cleveland trade a buttload of stuff for Deshaun Watson? Um, I think, I think they. It wouldn't surprise me if they did because, you know, they're a dumpster fire anyway, organization, but, you know, somebody that ain't played in over a year, I'm going to give you two first round draft points and, you know, the phone number to the masseuse. I mean, I'm just saying, I don't, I don't know what. Jordan Love would actually get. But, you know, ironically, Cleveland's doing pretty good. Houston's not. Eh. Cleveland's doing good has nothing to do with Deshaun Watson. That also is true. Um, I want to go back real quick. We're running out against it, but. You want to cut it and stop and start again? We got seven minutes. This should go pretty quick. I just want to know what you think about the total Colts collapse against Minnesota and Matt Ryan losing another big lead. Not that he plays defense, but this has happened to him before in the Super Bowl, like we said, and this time giving up the largest lead in NFL history. Yep. Finally beat that Buffalo Houston game. Um. As a Chiefs fan, I'm happy because it moves the Chiefs from being given up the second highest comeback in the NFL history. Now they're dropped to third. 
So, you know, it's good. We're kind of going back in the pile. So that, that felt, you know, as a Chiefs fan, I'm happy for that. Yeah. Um, as a Colt, you know, watching the game, I actually turned it off because I thought it was just going to be, be over, you know. Weren't you and amazed? Then, <laughs> well, I start. I was still kind of keeping it on in the background, and then I went back to it. But I mean, they completely, completely collapsed. Yeah, I horrible. really don't have a dog in the fight either way, so I don't care. But I mean, Matt Ryan, you're trash. That is true. Also, all right, we got some games coming up uh, for AFC West people. Let's start with the team that doesn't matter in the AFC West because they've already been eliminated. That would be the uh, Denver Broncos. They are at the Rams. Who you got? Well, they're four and ten, and I said they would be five and thirteen. Yeah. So, go Rams. I've got the Rams themselves at myself. All right, these next teams still have a shot. The Chargers are playing said Indianapolis Colts. So I'm pretty in much LA nowhere in Indiana. L.A. or Indianapolis? It is in Indy. Yeah, unfortunately. I mean, L.A. had to play a game of their life against Tennessee, squeaked one out 17-14 this past week. Um. Until Indy actually... The, Jeff Saturday beat the Raiders in his first game and hasn't beat anybody else. So, um, Chargers. Yeah, I mean, this is one where I would be rooting for the Colts for obvious reasons. But let's face it, the Chargers are the better team. The Chargers and they're win. getting they're getting healthy. The yeah. Chargers are a team that nobody really was going to want to see in the playoffs. That is true. Um, Christmas Eve. The Raiders go to the Steelers. There's another team that's getting better. The Steelers. Ooh, and y'all have the same record, six and eight. Yes. Also, side note, I don't know if you know this, but that night, Steelers and the Raiders is the 50-year anniversary the immaculate of the Immaculate Reception. NFL, bravo to you for putting that game on Christmas Eve, 50 years anniversary. Um, Let's hope a different team wins. On the 50th. I really don't have a whole lot of faith in either one of those teams, to be honest. Um, I mean, let's be honest. The Raiders were benefactors of a stupid play by the Patriots. Not saying that the Patriots were going to win, but they the Patriots definitely gave you the game by yes, the way because... they played. Again, we were up by double digits and blew it. So no lead is safe. In <laughs> right. Vegas. No right. lead. Uh, evidently, no lead in the NFL is safe. Um, I, I don't trust Trubisky or Pickett, and I don't know who's going to be playing quarterback for the Steelers. So I'll probably, I'll probably swing towards the Raiders, but I really don't care who wins. <sighs> Yeah, Where's it at? it's in Pittsburgh. It's in so Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh so I'm going to I'm going to lean Raiders. toward the home team, but I really, really hope that you know this thing can keep up with Vegas. I don't want to be on that list of eliminated teams come Monday. Do you or do you really do you really want to make the playoffs like just so you can be eliminated in the first game? Not really, because that happened last year already. I mean, but do you think you're going to, if you get in, you're going to win a game? Again, no lead is safe. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying. It, I, we already mentioned the four teams at the top of the division. Yeah. They would have to fight, play one of those teams. It is not is, going to happen. I mean, if you're the seven seed, which is probably the only seed you can get, you're going to end up playing us. Again, it, it's a lose-lose situation. That's all I'm going to say about Although that. Although you guys play as tough, so you might get a shot. Well, wouldn't that be ironic? We have to see y'all at the end of the season in order to get in. And the very next and then, week. Exactly. Oh, yeah. If that's the case, Patrick Mahomes is definitely playing, and y'all are not making the playoffs. <laughs> Pretty much. Pretty much. And then finally, those Chiefs uh, are hosting the Seattle Seahawks. 
And you know I'm going with Kansas City because, you know, I have to. Big show I'm said going, so. I'm going with the home team as well, but I'm going to be honest. I have absolutely no faith in this defense. Tyler Lockett will not be playing. Doesn't matter. Really? Doesn't matter. Metcalf's playing. Y'all can shut him down. I don't know. We couldn't we couldn't shut down the Houston receivers. That is true. Although that... we couldn't shut down the referees either. And I tell you, that was that's a whole nother story we need to talk about sometime. Well, you'll have some home cooking this weekend though. I hope so. It'd be nice to unwrap an early Christmas present with a cheese victory. Speaking of Christmas, before we go, I just want to let everybody know we're off the next couple of weeks to spend the holiday with our loved ones, but we will be back January 5th for the next episode. All right. That's Big Show. I'm Rick. Slightly warm. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Thank you, Take everybody, us for out watching. Here. Thank you for watching us this year. We appreciate it. Looking forward to the next year. God bless you Well said, my brother. Well said. Y'all take care. Mm-hmm.